paid $50,000 for it. And a few years later, he will get a $16 million tax deduction. This is what the wealthy people have been doing for years. And if they can do it, we can too. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Tax Free Living. And today we have another one. We have another one of them episodes. Where I'm gonna be giving you all amazing sauce on a new strategy that most people do not know about, right? Today, I'm gonna be teaching you how buying art can help you live tax free. In today's um, atmosphere, we're seeing a lot more people are looking at art as collectible and actually as, a, as assets. So I was at Art Basel last year in Miami. It was amazing. And I really start looking at art differently. I start looking at art as not just something you can hang on a wall, but as a potential investment that can uh, bring you future value over time. First of all, let's talk about how do you buy art the right way so that it will increase in, in, in the value in the future, right? So I have some art friends and they gave me some amazing advice on how to purchase art the right way. And they told me that the profit in art is, is, is created at the buy, not the sale. So what that means is when you're looking to buy art and looking at it as an asset, you want to buy low and sell high, just like any other asset. So you want to find artists, new up and coming artists. You want to purchase the art when it's fairly, when it's fairly reasonable. And you want to purchase from artists who you expect to blow up over time, right? You want to look at their trajectory, look at who their paintings are getting hung up with, and just look at look at their overall frame of catalog. The profit from the art is recognized at the buy, not the sale. So when you buy the art, you want to sit on it, you want to hold it, and then you want to get it appraised in the future. And if the artist does what he's supposed to do, the price of the art is going to be worth a lot more over time. So let's do an example. What most people do is they, they, they buy the art, right? So you buy the art for $10,000 and then they wait a year or two years and then they hire an appraiser to reappraise the value of the art. Now, over a year or two, that $10,000 piece of art can be appraised at $100,000, right? It could, it could be appraised at $100,000 in just a year or two. So what people do, they buy it, they get it appraised and it appraises for more and then they sell it right here's the problem with that if you buy a piece of art at ten thousand dollars and you sell it at a hundred thousand you have to pay capital gains tax on the sale so if you purchase it at ten thousand sell it at a hundred you have ninety thousand dollars in profit and depending on what tax bracket you're in that's ninety thousand dollars of taxable income and if you're at the highest capital gains tax rate, that's 20%. So you're gonna have an $18,000 tax bill for you selling this piece of art. And the whole point of this show is to teach you how to live tax-free, not to teach you how to save on tax. So here's what you wanna do in order to take that same piece of art and sell it, not pay taxes on the sale and get a tax deduction at the same time. So let's talk about it, right? Let's use our same example. Let's say we purchased a piece of art at 10,000 and then we get it reappraised for 100,000, right? So now this piece of art is valued at $100,000. Instead of selling it, right, we're gonna find a 501c3 charity. Now, why are we gonna do this? Because in the IRS tax code, they say if you make a, either a cash donation or an asset donation to a 501c3 registered charity, you get a tax deduction for that donation. Now, here's the crazy part right? You don't get a tax deduction on the donation for what you pay for it. You actually get a tax deduction on the fair market value of the asset when it's donated. So what does that mean? That means that if we bought the piece of art at 10,000 and then we got the piece of art reappraised at 100,000, we don't get a tax deduction for $10,000. We actually get a tax deduction for the fair market value of that piece of art, which is $100,000. So we paid $10,000 for a piece of art, but now we get a $100,000 tax deduction for donating that piece of art to a 501c3 charity. So now we get a $100,000 write-off and we only pay $10,000 for it, right? This is what wealthy people have been doing for years to mitigate their tax liability. Matter of fact, I have a, a perfect example for you. I recently did some research and I found out that Eddie Murphy purchased a piece of art for $50,000. I think it was about five years ago. Now this piece of art was called the Shake Shack. It was a painting, uh, it's a beautiful painting by the way. And he bought it at a estate auction for $50,000. In 2022, that same piece of art was reappraised for $16 million, $16 million. So what Eddie Murphy can do is he could take that piece of art and he can donate it to the charity of his choosing. 
and he will get a $16 million tax deduction for donating that piece of art. And if he doesn't use it all in this year, he can use that deduction to carry forward in the future years. So he paid $50,000 for it. And a few years later, he will get a $16 million tax deduction for donating that same piece of art. And that's what I mean by like, if you wanna win the game of taxes, you have to understand the rules. Right? If you want to pay less tax, simply change the facts. Now look, I get it, y'all. I understand. I know what y'all are thinking. You're like, Carl, I hear what you're saying, bro. All this is cool, but I didn't buy the art to sell it. I want to keep the art. I want to keep it hung up in my office. I want to keep it hung up in my home. I don't want to give this piece of art away. Well, what if I told you that there was a strategy where you can buy the art, you can donate it, get the tax deduction, but still keep the art in your possession. Hmm, wouldn't that be crazy? Well, actually I have a strategy for you that can do just that, so let's talk about it. So, I'll break down the strategy piece by piece. So the first thing you need to do if you wanna leverage the strategy is you need to set up what's called a PFF, a private family foundation, okay? A private family foundation is very similar to setting up a charity, right? A private family foundation is a 501c3 recognized organization. The only difference is you are the owner and you are the sole donor and this private family foundation can stay in your family for generations to come. So what does this mean? This means you set up a family foundation for your family and you can decide to donate whatever assets you want to donate for this, to this charity and still keep the asset while getting the tax deduction. In our painting example, if Eddie Murphy wanted to, he could set up a private family foundation. He could donate that $16 million painting to his own private family foundation. He will get a $16 million tax deduction for doing so, depending on where his AGI is. They are AGI limitations. So he would get a $16 million tax deduction for doing so, and he still gets to keep the piece of art. Right? Because you only have to actually donate 5% of whatever's in that private family foundation per year. He could donate the $16 million piece of art, keep the piece of art in his collection, get the $16 million tax deduction at the same time. And guys, these are what celebrities do. These are what, this is what athletes do. This is what the wealthy people have been doing for years. And if they can do it, we can too. So guys, if you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that share button. And let me know in the comments below, are you gonna buy a piece of art now knowing that you have the potentiality to donate it, get a tax deduction, and still keep it as a part of your collection? This is another episode of Tax Free Living, guys. I'll see you all next time. Peace.